guys. Hope y'all are ready for part three. I'm gonna try to show y'all how to tune this carburetor without a tachometer. You know, when I first started doing this, I used a tachometer. But after a while of doing it, I learned what to listen for. And I would test myself. I would adjust these things in without the tack. And then get the tack and check myself to see where it was. So I would adjust it in. And if it would get it where I thought it should be. And at first I was a little off. You know, three or four hundred RPMs off. Usually to the low, because I was being like over cautious and I would turn it down just a little bit more just to be on the safe side. But then over time, you know, five, ten years doing it, I got to where I could put them about within 100 RPMs off. So if the saw is supposed to turn 12.5 and you adjust it by ear, you're probably going to get it at about 12.4, 12 12.3, 12 which is good enough if you don't have a tack. If you got a tack, then you can just use the tack and turn it up to 12.5 or whatever it's supposed to be. Um, but I don't even own the tack. It's just a small engine shop I worked at at the time when I started learning to do this, um, they had all those tools and tack and, but, um, since I learned how to do it without a tack, um, I never, never bought one, so I don't really need it unless I want to check my work. But, um, anyways, Let's get started on this thing. I'll show you how to do the low speed first and then the high speed. Now, we're going to do this saw assuming that that idle screw hasn't been messed with. If the idle screw hasn't been messed with, you haven't turned it or you bought the saw new and then you're going to repair it and that idle screw has never been messed with, just leave the idle screw alone. I'm not talking about the low speed screw for your low speed idle. I'm talking about the actual idle that's up higher. Well, on this one, it's, yeah, it's up higher. The idle's up here and your low and high is down here. I don't know if y'all can see that from that far away, but just assuming that this idle screw has not been messed with. Um, I may do a video later showing y'all how to do it if you turn the idle screw. Um, but for now, I know this one hasn't been messed with. So, and I'm not going to mess with it unless I need to. And usually you don't need to as long as it hasn't been messed with. As long as nobody's been in there turning it, just leave it where it was. It was where it was from the factory. You'll be able to adjust it in really easy from your low and your high speed screws. So, let's get started adjusting it. Alright guys, I got that camera a little bit far away. So that way you can, hopefully you can hear what I'm listening for, especially on the high speed screw. Let's start it back up. Well, I gotta turn it on. Thank <laughs> you. 
and it is dead. That means you went in too far. So you need to back it back off. You may have to choke it again and get it started because it ran out of fuel. Let's see. Yeah, we might choke it again. speed screw up you'll hear it go too lean and then I'm gonna back it off to where you can hear that flutter in the exhaust and I'll do that several times just so you can hear it I'm, I can't really talk to you I have to yell or think I do over the saw I may be yelling at you through the camera I don't know but I'm gonna start back up and I'm going to put this on the high speed screw and I'm going to adjust it up, down, up, down so you can hear that flutter in that exhaust and as long as you can hear that flutter in the exhaust you should be safe. You may want to back it off just a little bit more and when you're doing this if you have trouble adjusting that high speed screw, like you're at a turn and a half when you set your carburetor when you've done it, and the saws are running away, run wide open, you probably still got problems. You got an air leak somewhere, um, intake boot, intake gasket, didn't get the carburetor tight enough, hole in the fuel line, something around that neighborhood. But. <laughs> Let's adjust it and get the high speed done.
lost. It's really hard to explain that to somebody, but um, as long as you turn it up, you'll hear that thing lean way out, and that flutter will go away. And then when you back it off, you'll hear it come back. Maybe y'all can hear that in the camera. I'm hoping that you can. But um, hopefully you'll be able to do it. Just be careful doing it. And, um, but that's how you do it. All right, guys. Here we go. Got a, a good running saw. I think he'll be happy with it. He gets it back. But um, once you get it tuned in and everything's adjusted, and this thing is warmed up, you ought to be able to grab that thing after you've shut it off. We can go get you something to drink or whatever. You're ready to cut again. You ought to be able to flip that switch back on and just give that thing one pull, maybe two, and it should start. Just like that. If it does that, you're good to go. So, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Hit the little subscribe button on the right side. Your right side, it's my left, but your right. <laughs> and then there'll be a little bell show up down there. You wanna click that little bell to get future notifications of future videos. If you like this video, hit the little like button, thumbs up button, <clears throat> share this video with your friends, and we'll see you on the next videos.